Hey there, my name is Elliot, and I'm another one of the people normally behind the scenes on our weekly test drive reviews as the video producer for Car Gurus. A couple eagle-eyed viewers might even recognize me from a few cameo appearances. However, today I get to play presenter and show you my lovely 2016 Ford Focus. When I find a pair of shoes that just work, I'm tempted to buy a couple pairs. And that's exactly how my car shopping journey has been over the last couple years. A lightly used two to three year old Focus has just always fit with my budget first car buying mentality. And because of that fact, I've now owned one of each of the three North American generations of the Focus. First, it was a 2005, then a 2010, and now this 2016. However, Ford's decision to cut the Focus lineup here in the US and North America has left me with a bit of an issue. Next time I need a car, I'm not sure what to get. So down there in the comments, let me know what you think the best affordable hatchback is for my next car. My first two Focuses were the basest of the base S trims. They were manual everything, including a five-speed transmission, which I actually really miss, and they had crank windows. I was essentially one step up from having to power my own windshield wipers. And when it was time to buy this car, I had decided I reached a point in my life where I had earned the right to a power window. And I actually got a lot more in the process. This SE trim has a ton of upgrades compared to the regular S trims I was used to driving, but this car also came with the optional luxury package, which includes leather seating, a power driver's seat, fog lamps, 17 inch wheels, ambient lighting on the interior, and a power moonroof. Now, if I didn't know any better, I could trick myself into thinking that this actually was a luxury car based on what I had been driving. However, due to my line of work, I've been in way too many nice cars to really think this is anything other than what it is. But that should bring me to the price. I bought this car in early 2018, and it had just over 8,000 miles on the clock, and I paid only $12,000 for it. Now, when this car was first released in 2016, the MSRP was over $19,000, and this also has the additional $2,000 luxury group upgrade, as well as the moonroof, which was an additional $900. So that tells me two things. One, the Focus really doesn't hold its value all that well, and two, either way, I got a great deal. I enjoy this car. It's not fast, it's not sexy, it's not powerful, but it's got the upgrades I care about with Bluetooth connectivity, leather seating all around, a power moonroof, and an okay sound system. Now, even though it's one of the most ubiquitous cars on the road, I still think it actually looks pretty good, especially in this color. And I live in the city where there are potholes everywhere and I park on the street. So buying something super nice at this point in my life just didn't really make sense to me. Now, it's not all rosy. There is one thing about the Focus that I truly hate. And I would be ignoring the elephant in the room if I didn't bring up its dual clutch transmission problems. Now, 2012 to 2016 Focuses have a dual clutch automatic transmission that is the subject of a now settled class action lawsuit against Ford. Now, suddenly my car's price tag is making a little bit more sense. Now, in my experience, the dual clutch transmission is ever present. Shifting can be harsh when starting from a stop and moving from first to second gear with inconsistent shuddering and vibrations. However, it doesn't happen all the time, and I don't personally feel unsafe driving the car, but it is easily my least favorite thing about this Focus. Of course, though, there are other things I don't love. I don't love the amount of power I get from the 2-liter, 160-horsepower engine. These plasticky bottom door handles just feel cheap. The front passenger seat has an uncomfortable lack of thigh support, although I'm rarely in that seat. And this very tiny 4.2-inch media screen is crazy small, even for 2016. So those are the small nitpicky details that I don't like, but what about the little things that I really love about this car? The wing mirrors with these little integrated blind spot mirrors, the capless fuel filler and this door that integrates with the taillights, the moonroof and power everything is such a great upgrade. The center armrest in the back seat is great for passengers and I have two USB ports, one in the front console and one in the center. The ambient lighting is something that I didn't know that I wanted, but now I love. And the EPA estimated gas mileage of 26 city 38 highway and 30 combined is actually pretty realistic. So to wrap this up, I guess the question is, would I recommend this car? And with some hesitation, I'd say yes. A test drive is going to be vitally important for you to gauge that vehicle's transmission and frankly, your comfort with it. Know that for me, it's an inconsistent problem. Some days it's smooth and nothing is wrong, other days not so much. But also like me, you're probably looking at this car because of its value. And to me, that value proposition worked. So at this point, I'd like to say thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and please let me know your thoughts down there in the comments. Please consider liking or subscribing or both, and I hope you have a great day, stay well, and I'll see you next time.